and today we have a great guest, Tomas Hassel, who is the CEO of Nexteria, and uh, he will introduce himself uh, in a minute. So just to uh, just to remind us of uh, a couple of different points uh, before we start. So uh, we are uh, we are at the Startup Grind event. The Startup Grind is a global community of entrepreneurs, um, of people from startups. It's powered by Google for startups, and uh, its aim is to educate, inspire, and connect, uh, especially entrepreneurs and people from the ecosystem. Uh, Startup Grind Bratislava has been here for three years. Uh, so welcome to the community if you haven't been here before. And this one is, guess, guess um, how many startup grants have been here, uh, have been uh, so far. So anybody has an idea? 13? 30? 30? Okay. Maybe 40? Okay. So you're a little closer. <laughs> Uh, so it's the, our 33rd startup, right, uh, in Bratislava. Um, and we would like to thank uh, the partners. So the first one is Campus Cowork. Uh, it's this place, Campus City, and um, it's also a great co-working space in Muniska Dolina. It's an international place. Uh, space for early stage startup entrepreneurs. Uh, there are also students and freelancers, I guess. And um, it's uh, uh, they they are creating a community of like-minded people. Um, and some of, some of you are here tonight. And Decent. Decent is the second partner of today's event. Uh, there has been a long-term. Uh, relationship with Descent. Uh, they have been supporting Startup Grinds for over one year and we would like to thank them very much. Um, so, logistics. Please use Slido for questions. Uh, the hashtag is up there, so you just uh, click on slido.com and you write S G H And um, the flow will be as follows. So uh, we will start the fireside chat at around seven, and then uh, we will have the time for, for questions. Um, in the meantime, I guess we'll see how many questions will be there. We would love to uh, provide as much um, space to you because we would like this to be interesting for you. So we will not wait for the questions uh, to the very end. But you can you can post questions and, and if relevant we will get to them and, and include them into, into debate. Uh, after uh, the ending of the fireside chat, there will be networking and you can go for a campus tour as well. So if you haven't been here before, uh, you can you can visit I guess the terrace as well, right, Vladka? Uh, can can we'll be uh, we will be visiting the terrace as well? Uh -huh, yes, we can go. It's on the seventh. So it's amazing. It's one of the best views in Bratislava. So uh, you better not miss it. So uh, that's it for the logistics. So networking starts at uh, at eight thirty. So let's get to our guest now, uh, Tomáš. It's a it's a great honor to be here with you. Uh, Tomáš uh, has been uh, has been uh, leading uh, uh, next area. <laughs> formerly Manageria, uh, for several years now. And he sometimes says it's uh, the stuffiest job so far. So we will learn why. Uh, before he was a businessman, before he was an NGO man, before he was uh, mathematics and physics and informatics faculty student studying um, artificial intelligence. <laughs> so, please, uh, is there anything more you would like to say about yourself? Yes, thank you. Thank you uh, for inviting me. Uh, it, it's an honor for me to be here with you, Mika, and uh, with all of you. Uh, 
I will introduce myself, uh, maybe not by, by telling you the, the story of my life, but, but maybe by a couple of uh, maybe major topics of my life or things that are important to me. Uh, the first and probably most important is uh, uh, probably called focus on activity. Uh, I founded uh, my first non-profit at the university as a student and right after uh, graduating this uh, okay mathematics artificial intelligence it, it really wasn't my, my, my preferred uh, preferred topic uh, but I, I chose my, my uh, field of study during the communism and uh, uh, my favorite topics, uh, which were literature and history, weren't really uh, good uh, good topics to study under under totalitarian uh, regime. So so uh, I chose mathematics and somehow uh, managed to end and finish and graduate. Uh, and uh, I had many 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 activities during uh, university studies and and right after graduating. Uh, with my, my uh, high school uh, friends uh, founded a company, a, a business. Uh, we were uh, one of the first e-commerce uh, in Slovakia and probably one of the first uh, companies in Slovakia uh, which succeeded in expanding from Slovakia to the whole Central European region, so it was uh, very interesting for me. Uh, then uh, twice I was elected uh, president of the Slovak Association of Travel Agencies, and then uh, now for almost five years I have been uh, working uh, in a, again in a non-profit uh, called Nexteria that would help uh, talented students grow. Uh, so this is not the story of my life, but I wanted to document maybe uh, that I always uh, tried to be uh, active in, in, in the environment uh, I was living in. And, and that's, that's the second major topic uh, of my life, uh, which I would call promoting entrepreneurship. And by entrepreneurship, I don't mean business. Uh, by entrepreneurship, I mean a, a way of life, uh, shaping the, the, the environment where, where you live. Uh, as I said, uh, first it was a non-profit, then this non-profit uh, just transformed to business, now it's a non-profit again. Uh, this is something uh, I'm trying to teach also, maybe more inspire our students at Nexteria, that we are responsible for our environment and we cannot just wait until someone else will solve our problems. Uh, the third major topic of my life is that uh, I like see and maybe sometimes also help people grow around me. And again, it's not only the topic of uh, our non-profit next area where it is really my, my, my everyday job, which is great. But uh, this was something uh, I, I was focusing on probably most of my life. Uh, next area runs a program which is called Next Area Leadership Academy for University Students. When I was a student, uh, it was early 90s, uh, there was there wasn't such a program, there was nothing, almost from what we know now. Uh, so there wasn't such a program, so we just created it uh, with, a, with a bunch of friends. We were organizing uh, uh, what we would call now guest speaker lectures, uh, meetings with interesting people. Uh, and it was all about personal development, about education, about, about growing. Uh, and maybe the fourth uh, thing which I think characterizes me is that, uh, and you will probably see it uh, in some of your questions, that I, I, I often reply, I don't know. I think it is important uh, 
now because uh, people people tend to bullshit all day. Uh, I was doing it too, so uh, I'm not an exception. But uh, the the older I am, the the the, the, the more I I uh, see uh, more the exceptions than the general rules, and the the, the, the more maybe humble and modest, modest I, I become, and so. Uh, so uh, I think it is important to, to admit that we don't know most of the important things. Thank you. So how did it all begin um, in terms of your uh, entrepreneurship journey? So you said you were trying a few things with your classmates or former classmates and uh, it didn't start as a business. So how did it all start? Uh, again, it's, it's all about activity. Uh, we didn't plan anything. We were young. We were students, high school students, university students. And we certainly didn't plan to, to start a business. Uh, we were just active and trying to, to, to do things that had some purpose, maybe, and with interesting people. In fact, this is something I am, I am telling our students now the same. Be active, do as many interesting things, projects you can, and just get to know interesting people. And this is exactly what we were doing. In the late 80s, uh, uh, we were part of, of an environmental movement which, uh, which uh, was focused on preserving uh, uh, rural architecture, all these these wooden uh, wooden houses, and and uh, and there were beautiful people around it. Uh, most of them, kind of as, as we say, islands of positive uh, deviation. Some 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 uh, islands within this this strange regime that was uh, in, in, in uh, Czechoslovakia. And we were attracted by these people. These people were, were free. Uh, they were doing uh, things that, that were mindful. Uh, it, it made sense and we were attracted by them. Uh, it was a bit strange. I was a boy from, from Bratislava. In fact, never uh, had any contact with any rural environment. And, and we spent uh, our, our holidays and, and uh, summers uh, repairing old wooden uh, houses. It didn't make any sense, but it makes sense uh, in terms of, of, of personal growth. We, we, we made uh, friends, uh, we met wonderful people, and, and we saw people which were at that time probably my age now, uh, in their 40s, uh, uh, doing totally different things that were normal at that time. And, and this inspiration is important. This is something we are trying to do now in next area, to, to inspire young people and show them that things can go in a different way and they, that they, they are responsible for, for, for their lives and for, for the environment they, they live in. So uh, I didn't have any plan and no one of us had any plan, but Life is, is interesting and from a non-profit to a business, uh, the, the road can be very short. We were repairing these wooden houses and then we found that next year uh, this wooden house which didn't have any use, uh, use uh, uh, was broken again because uh, there was uh, no one heated, uh, no one lived there. So to make it short, uh, we started with the rural tourism. Uh, which made a new purpose for this, this architecture. Uh, from here you have uh, a travel agency, now internet came with uh, uh, the possibility of creating the reservation system. Uh, as I said, it was one of the first functioning e-commerce in, in Slovakia. And then it was business, and just uh, we expanded, uh, we, we we're providing this service first to, to, to Czechs uh, coming to Slovakia, then we added uh, uh, Czech accommodations and uh, in the, in the, within 10-15 years uh, uh, 
it was a reservation system used by Poles, Hungarians, Austrians, uh, Central Europe. So uh, I'm not saying to, to our students today, uh, you must have a perfect vision. I'm saying then, be active, try to, to know interesting people and with interesting people and when you find your talent, what you are good at and what, you, what makes sense to you, uh, you will certainly uh, find a perfect project. You will start it or you will follow, you will take part of it, uh, just uh, start and, and uh, it's not important if it's a non-profit or it's a business, it just makes sense. What did you What did you learn about yourself? Uh, what were your talents? Uh, all four of us were uh, from this uh, mathematics, physics, IT environment. Uh, I was probably the only IT guy, which and the only one who didn't know anything about IT. <laughs> Oh, the, the three of us, uh, one was uh, a student of mathematics, one, the other one of physics and the other of biology and they, they were the IT guys and I was the only one who, who didn't do any programming at all. Uh, what I discovered maybe was that uh, I was good with uh, working with people. Uh, uh, I liked the, the, the pressure of uh, the flexibility that every startup just uh, uh, without that you, you do everything uh, this was something that that I liked I wasn't very much focused on, on uh, one area uh, and uh, that's probably it so you you kept uh, saying when we were talking together that it's very important uh, fact that you were um, not alone in the business. So please tell us about uh, your relationships with your partners. How did it evolve? Who were there? How did you uh, divide uh, the responsibilities? Uh, this is really important to me and when, when people ask me about our company, what, what was our biggest success, uh, or the most important thing to me when I look back. Uh, when you look back, uh, you don't look at financial reports. Uh, you look back to, to some memories, experience, and for me the most important thing, and I really think it's unique, and I have a whole lecture about it uh, in, in, in Nextedia, is that uh, we started four founders, and 25 years ago and uh, we spent all the journey together and we are still close friends we visit each other with families and this is this is really something unique and uh, if there was something characteristic uh, about that company of course we could talk about you know innovations and data and whatever but the most important feature of that company was what, what would we now call culture, but we didn't know that term, it didn't exist, we didn't know that it's called culture, but it was a close friendship and very, very good relations between, uh, between us as founders. And uh, I'm not saying this just as my own personal experience, this shaped this company. Uh, we had a call center where the, the work for these uh, young people who worked with us uh, wasn't very pleasant and wasn't very inspiring. It was a rather routinous work, but most of them when we meet, uh, uh, they say that that was the best work environment they have ever uh, had. Uh, and the reason was that there was no place in this company uh, to gossip, to any negative energy, and, and, and that, that was not ordered. It was because the four leaders were friends and the, we, there were very, very harmonic relationships uh, between us. 
and uh, and that's why it just lasts 25 years. Although we had, of course, uh, crises and, and and complications and successes and 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 money and all the stuff that that can ruin uh, relationships and companies. Uh, and this is something really unique for me and something that I am trying to uh, to inspire our students how to how to find such people and. Uh, how to, to create such an environment. So there, there is a saying in the startup world that one uh, founder is not enough and two are too many sometimes. So it, uh, it doesn't apply no, I don't to, to limba.com, no, your company. Not only it doesn't, uh, doesn't apply, but I don't think it is true. Uh, and now to explain, it may be true for someone. I have I spent 20 years in business, and most of my friends are business people. And for some of them, it is totally true. We are individuals. Everyone is different, and and I have several friends from business who are uh, the only founders and only owners of the companies, and they are totally satisfied with it, and that's the way they they, they like it and do it, and they do it very well. But uh, but there are other people like me uh, who who prefer uh, cooperating with uh, with people. Uh, it has also big advantages uh, at the beginning. Uh, startups and, and business is hard work. I mean I don't have to emphasize this. And if you have uh, at the beginning four uh, founders, you have four people who are totally 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 focused on, on, on your company. Never uh, an employee has the same uh, same relationship to, to the company, same, same zeal. So, so this is one of the advantages. Another is that we were just, we were totally different. Uh, uh, when I say that the four of us are close friends, it doesn't mean at all that we are the same. I mean, we are totally different. Uh, in any way you can imagine. I mean, uh, any two of us are very different, but there is some, first of all, there is some, we call chemistry that, that works. But uh, then you must have some, some, if you want to do business together, you must have some, some similarities. Uh, uh, and I'm saying this on, on real experience because since we transformed the non-profit into profit at the beginning, they were, 20 of us, uh, when we started the company, eight of us, and very quickly uh, uh, we transformed it into this, this, this four. And each of the stories of, of, uh, of uh, the, the people leaving the, the company was a story of some kind of, of misunderstanding. And uh, I, I have a whole course uh, about it in, in, in the next area. Uh, but the four of us were very different, but we were sharing some values, uh, which were basically hard work, uh, a certain courage, which you must have when you do, and it's, it's not important it's a business or non-profit, if you, if you want to, to create and lead any type of, any type of organization, you, you, you must take risks. And uh, we had a friend uh, from this non-profit era who was a very, very uh, good friend of us and very uh, nice person, but but he didn't want to take any risk. You can't do business if you don't want to take risks. Uh, so that was that was a part of, of this uh, values shared. And uh, one, the most important, and this is something that I. I maybe tried to inspire our students the most. Uh, I don't know maybe the proper word in, in, in English, but I would say, I call it generosity. Uh, and not in the material term, but also if you want to share profits and money, you must be generous also in the material sense of the world. Of the, of the word, but but uh, generosity in terms of, of that you want 
the other person to be successful, you want the other person to feel good, you want the other, other person, even if it goes sometimes against your own uh, uh, interests, you want the others to be uh, satisfied. And uh, in this sense, uh, having co-founders, it's like a marriage. In fact, I, I don't see any, any difference between, between uh, being married and, and having a company with three other guys. I mean, uh, it's uh, without this really deep sense of generosity that you don't just fight over stupid, unimportant things. You won't keep your, your co-founders and you won't keep your wife. It just doesn't work. And this is, this is something that, that uh, I really talk a lot about with our students and I'm, I'm, I'm really happy when one of our, our alumni, Samo Hapag, who has a nice, uh, very nice company, Vacuum Labs, and uh, when we meet and Samo says, Tomas, thank you. I always think of, of this word you taught me and, and I know what he's talking about. That's, that was the success of, of our story. Just just to complete that I know you know it is real life and you you certainly know such cases. So many great projects, companies, relationships were ruined by really stupid causes. And and uh, Every time I feel angry and, and uh, about something, I just think about it. Let's get calm and let's just ask this rational question. Is this so important? Is this thing, problem so important that I will ruin the company because of it? Maybe many people do. a nice question on, on Slido. So to what extent did the luck play a ro the role in your career or uh, we can say in your business? Tell us some situation. Uh, a great deal. And this is one of the mysteries of life for me uh, that uh, of course uh, I don't know any successful project company, non-profit where there is no hard work behind it. I don't know any single one. Uh, there must be hard work, there must be courage, uh, there must be great work with people, talent and so on, but uh, also many, many times uh, luck to be in the right time, the right place. And of course it was part of our company. The whole company was based on, on internet. It just arrived exactly at that time when if there was no internet, we would close that that funny little garage company uh, focused on rural tourism. It, it wouldn't make any sense to take one or two years. It was a nonsense, looking back. But exactly at that time, the internet uh, came. Uh, there was, uh, from the four founders, three of them were, were IT people. Uh, all this is luck. And, uh, and, and I will say the opposite. Uh, ten years later, we had everything you can think about, experience, money, everything we didn't have ten years before, and, and uh, we weren't able to, to, to create a new business. Just, just right time, right place. And you, I know many, many companies which uh, tried to, uh, let's say, expand their business uh, in the wrong time and, and they, they had finance, they had experience, best people, it just didn't work. So, um, I will get... But uh, always I, I have to add that hard work, courage and all the rest must be there. Just uh, uh, it doesn't mean that you just can you know, just wait for for your lucky moment. Uh, this is this is uh, you just have to try and try and try and try, and the luck will come. And um, there is uh, there is another 
important topic connected uh, to this um, uh, this generosity, lack, uh, hard work. Uh, you had uh, guiding principles uh, that were connected to uh, making things in a simple way uh, and also focus on customer ser service. So could you elaborate on this? Yes, uh, this, this was an important part of our business and I think uh, Today, uh, again, we have all this terminology and you know books, and we didn't know anything about it. These were 1990s. Uh, there was nothing. I mean, uh, we were dealing with problems like that uh, to have a telephone line, you had to apply to Slovak Telecom and wait for three months. Unbelievable. So this was the environment where we started business. Uh, and there were no role models. I mean, there was a, nobody doing interesting business. Uh, so, so from this point of view, it's really interesting. And we were totally intuitive and we, we made many mistakes, but everything was pure intuition. And uh, today we would call it co company values probably, uh, and one of them was honesty. And uh, it sounds like obvious, okay, honesty, what does it have to do with business? It has to do tremendously with business. Uh, I will give you one great example. Uh, we always focused from the very beginning very much on customer service, uh, which I understand is honesty. I'm producing something, the product is not ideal and perfect at all. At the beginning, every startup has just, you know, doesn't work very well. Uh, and you have basically two ways. You can, you can ignore it or you can concentrate on it. And one of my advice to, to, to the startups, all, of course also to, to any developed business, but at the startup phase it's very important, concentrate on what doesn't work from on the feedback of your clients. If you don't do it, not only it's not honest uh, towards the clients, but you don't get the most important information you can, and it's the feedback of the client. The client is telling you what doesn't work, what would be more efficient, what would be more um, uh, pleasant and comfortable, and, and the, the client is telling you tremendously valuable information. And uh, uh, so for many years, maybe 10 years, uh, the, the problems were always uh, with every single client were solved by one of us, by, by one, of found, uh, one of the founders, which wasn't typical and, 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 and usual at all, but uh, this was, uh, one of the most valuable sources of, of our growth. We knew our product perfectly. And and it is honesty. We talked about, we talked about um, uh, hard work. And uh, so uh, did you need to keep up on life, on your family, on your real relationships? Or did you have any other strategies to keep this uh, working? Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a very good question. Uh, there are two answers. The first is, uh, at the beginning, yes. I don't know, as I said, any, any successful project where the first, at least year, and usually years, are not hard, hard, hard work and focus on just that one, one uh, project. Uh, on the other hand, and that's the other answer, and, and a very interesting one, uh, after a couple of years, then it's a matter of choice. Uh, one of my, my lucks in life was that, that uh, the, the four founders of, of Yuba, uh, we were absolutely uh, the same, uh, we had the same PR. And we didn't. And uh, and the story is interesting because uh, 
it wasn't uh, based on the type of company. It was our decision. And it's always a decision. And, and you just, uh, of course, maybe we had uh, less profit because we hired more people. We had to organize things in a different way. But the four of us were firm on the fact that we want to have lives. And that was one of the most important things for me because uh, I spent a lot of time with, with my kids, uh, which are now 12 and 15. And when my, my first son Theo was born, I was uh, working part time and I, I was really a lot of time at home with him and with my wife. And I think uh, not only it was one of the deepest experience and, and my life, but also I think that uh, our relationship uh, is based on, 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 on respect. And, and I just don't believe any entrepreneur who, who would tell, tell me that it, it isn't possible, because everyone was saying it isn't possible, and, and we did it. But it was a decision, it was a plan, and of course there were a price to pay. It cost money. So we're talking about finance. Um, there, is, there is an interesting question. So um, by the time you were uh, finishing your studies, uh, you were married. And what about financial security? So what, uh, did it play any, any role in your thinking about uh, business? There was no financial security. Uh, we were really poor. We were poor. Uh, most of my friends were, uh, it was the 90s. The economy was starting and, and there were many, many opportunities uh, in, in Western companies coming to Slovakia and, and young people grew into managers uh, very quickly uh, because there was uh, the older generation, first of all, had no experience with, uh, with free economy, market economy, uh, had no language skills. So, so young people, my generation was really, uh, had unbelievable opportunities in, in, in uh, foreign companies coming to Slovakia. In fact, uh, most of my friends were looking at us as we are fools because we were working much more than they did. Uh, there was no security. We were earning uh, really uh, very, very little money. But we were happy. I mean, we wanted to do to, to business and our business. It was a choice. I, didn't, uh, I never regretted it. And, and uh, if I wanted, I, every, every day I could change it. I, Every one of us could, could go to, to an international company, but we wanted to, to develop our business. Uh, but security, I didn't know such work. And, but uh, to be honest, uh, uh, at that time, everything was insecure. In the 1990s, you cannot imagine what, what a strange <laughs> world it was. So, so I didn't consider it as something strange. But no, there was no security. And of course, the, the, the company could finish without any success. But that, that's the same today. I mean, maybe uh, our, our students at, at our academy, uh, of course, they are rich compared to what we were. But uh, in fact, it's the same story. If they, if they want to, to, to go to or to, to lead their own non-profit business, whatever, they just must give up some some comfortable uh, uh, job at an international company. In some way, it's the same. You just have to give up some some securities and to, to take risks. And um, did you have any time of when you thought that you will not be So I don't think so because uh, I mean there, there were difficult moments, but at that time it was very important for me and stabilizing that there, there were four of us. 
A very difficult point was uh, when the, the crisis in uh, 2008-9 uh, came because we had a drop in, in, in sales by 40 or 50 percent under normal conditions at the end of the company. And uh, like that, that was really hard, but that was one of the most uh, interesting experiences of my, my, well, not my business life, my life. And uh, the, the interesting, uh, and, and very interesting because then you find how much you can and how quickly you can transform a business uh, within one year without growth, with these drop of uh, 50% of sales, we had a higher profitability than in the, in the three years before the crisis where you know, the economy was boosting, we're investing, we're investing uh, in a bad way, of course, as, as always, when you know, the economy is booming, uh, the crisis is uh, a very, a very good, uh, a very good, uh, way how, how nature uh, 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 arranges efficiency and, and uh, but it hurts of course sometimes but, but that, that, that was a, a, a very interesting but very hard experience yes, of course we didn't sleep from day to day uh, the company was 50% uh, smaller and under normal conditions we would go into bankruptcy within three months what did you do? Uh, at that time, uh, the crucial thing was again and again and again the relationship of our of us four founders. We didn't panic because we had trust. Uh, when when you you trust your colleagues, and it's not only, as I said, it's not only that you trust your three founders. If you have this culture in the company, you trust everybody in that company, just the culture of, of the company. So, so this made things much easier. And so we just restructured the company and, and, and uh, we were, uh, the board meeting was uh, every morning at, at the local cafe and every morning we were just uh, uh, inventing uh, how to do it and, uh, and just to, 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 to show the, the climate of the company and the employees uh, suggested to, 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 to low, lower the, the, the wages by 30 percent. Just And of course uh, it, didn't, it wasn't enough, or, uh, there were people leaving and so on. It was hard, it was very hard, but we managed it and it was a great experience. So let's get to let's get to your current job. So next area, the, uh, there is an inter interesting question there uh, that might uh, help us uh, start talking about what next area is. So what do you consider the biggest success of next area? Is there any so far? Because you you are working with young people. So the, the real impact will be visible in, uh, in, um, uh, in many years, but so far. Uh, the biggest success of Nexteria is that it is still alive uh, after 10 years. Uh, because uh, doing uh, a non-profit in Slovakia, especially if you do it in a way we are doing it, can explain uh, is uh, is much more difficult than doing business, uh, and that's why, as, as you said, and I'm always saying that that this is not the toughest job, but uh, it's ten times <laughs> tougher than, 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 than the business I was I was doing. Uh, maybe just to explain. What I meant by doing it in this way. Uh, next study is a non-profit, uh, but we have no state money, we have no European money, and we have uh, no money at all from st 
strange private sources, which are absolutely usual in, 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 in Slovak business. Uh, when you look for donors, 50% of, of them, or of the money offered, will be from bad sources. So, <coughs> combination, no state money, no European money, and no bad money, uh, limits your financial sources to oh, has been, limits your financial sources to, to to real tough job. But it makes sense if the purpose of your non profit is to develop a new generation of young people who will maybe one time lead this country, I don't mean politically, but in business, in non-profits, in the public sector, you cannot do it with bad money. It just doesn't make sense. You don't have much choice in this, in this way. And by the way, this was the reason why I chose Nexteria when I was looking for a project uh, I was looking for a project which, where I could use my experience on the one hand, uh, which would have a, a, a beautiful idea, a purpose, but I was, uh, as a businessman, from I was detracted from the non-profit sector because, uh, and that was partly a is partly not, uh, non-profit sector for me was kind of strange, uh, uh, state grants where, first of all, as, as an entrepreneur, you don't like the state as uh, too much. Uh, second of all, you know that you know all this, these grant systems. Then you, you it pushes you to, to to realize projects which are granted and not the ones you want to do. I, this was really something that, that disturbed me. And then I discovered this organization. As I said, with, with, with no state money, with no European money, with no bad money, struggling, really struggling, but with a beautiful idea, with beautiful people around, and, and so I said, okay, I will try it. And it has been for five years that I'm, I'm doing it, and now we are one of the largest non-profits in Slovakia. We have 16 employees, and and uh, this is this is success to me that we live. But in some way, um, I guess you you are interested in impact. Of, uh, I uh, I bet. Uh, so so do you do you somehow measure um, the the success or the impact of the activities? Yes, of course, I mean, that, that, that was part of the joke, of course, the, the impact is important, and now there is a story and there is, there is some data. The story is that uh, it's much easier for me to do this job now uh, when we already see the results. As, I, as we say, we already pick the, the, the fruits. Uh, Next year, leadership academy is a three-year program. We have been, we started it ten years ago, so there, there are six, seven uh, groups of, of alumni, and uh, I don't have any doubts that this this uh, this project makes sense because I see Mirka is one of the alumni. Uh, I, I just see the people, it's real people who are doing real jobs and real projects and, 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 and doing it in exactly the way the founders and me plan it. Uh, they are people with skills, they are people with values, they are people with connections with other people in exterior and the community and, and, and other people. They are in business, either their own businesses or, or interesting uh, businesses like, like, like Slido, expanding, show, showing that you can do big business and international business from Bratislava. 
they are in, in non-profits, they are in, in the public sector, and first of all, they are in Slovakia, because there was this, this concern, absolutely logical. There were people saying, why are you doing this? What a silly idea. You will invest, uh, you know, lots of money uh, into, into the education of, of, of these young people, and then they leave and you will never see, see them again. Uh, it didn't happen and it doesn't happen for one reason, and that's why we were quite firm about it. it shouldn't, but we never know. And the reason is that uh, the program takes three years, and within three years, uh, we offer to our students so many opportunities and build so many relationships that it just doesn't make sense to, to. In, in this context, Bratislava is more interesting than London to, to, to say the same thing. So, so, and this is the most important thing. Uh, I, I can just see the, the, the real people and the real stories, your story, Mirka, and your story, Sima, and, you know, and others, and, and, and it just makes sense. And it's, it is important because five years ago, uh, I'm responsible, I was responsible in part, I am responsible for, for funding, and it was a tough job to, also for me personally, to, to seek funding, with just, you know, it was a dream. I was telling a dream. We dream about, you know, young people with skills and, and values and active and, and, you know, changing their environment and the, 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 the donor company or the person was just, you know, believe me or not believe me and that's it. Now, I, you know, I have this list of, of young successful people and that's the data. So now it's it's easy. And in what ways does does the work in business uh, differ? Like uh, when you compare Limba to to your NGO job. Um, so are there are there different principles you need to work work with? Uh, again, there are two answers. Uh, the first is that it's the same, uh, and it is true in some way. Uh, I was really surprised uh, how similar a non-profit, a uh, high quality, I would say, non-profit is to a good company. In fact, it's, it must be a perfectly working organization. In, in, in some way there is no difference, which is good, which is good because it, it, it attracts uh, people from business to non-profits uh, and young people. Uh, so, so that's one part of, of the story. And the other part is what I said, that it's much harder and, and, and more difficult to, to run a non-profit for some reasons, and they are not organizational. In terms of organization, I can say that Nexteria is working probably better than our company did, which is based also, this was 10 years ago, and you know, it's just things develop. Nexteria is a, and it's not my, my, my it's just, we, we have, we have, on average, I work with, uh, with, uh, people with a higher potential, with better skills than in our company. It just uh, things develop very quickly and that's great. Uh, so on the organizational level, I would say it's radically the same. Uh, what is not the same are, are two things which make it harder. The first is uh, that you have not one client, as a company you have a client. Uh, as a non-profit, you have two clients, and uh, I will explain which one. But but, and it, this makes like from one dimension two dimensions. It, it's a big big difference. Uh, you have a client, let's say, who, who you serve in our, in our environment, students, and then you have the other client, and it's 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 the fun, it's the the one who gives funding, uh, and uh, so. In the company, you just concentrate on satisfying 
the client, of course you have this whole, in some way, in the company you have the client, also the, your, your, your company members, and, and in the non-profit you have the client and, and your, your colleagues, and then you have the funding, uh, which in Exteria is just to, to, to show the, the complexity. Uh, we have uh, a very good structure of funding in terms of we don't have one big donor who then, you know, can order us what we have to do or not. We have total freedom. Of course, it's based on the decision that we don't have state money and we don't have uh, uh, big donors from strange financial groups. Uh, but the complexity is uh, we have uh, an exterior leadership academy about a dozen of, of uh, cooperating companies. We have uh, about 100 uh, small donors, uh, several bigger ones, and we have 100 students and 120 alumni. This is a complexity incomparable to to usual business. So this is this is one point of view. Uh, and the second the second uh, reason why it is uh, much more complicated that you have uh, much more stakeholders. In some way, it's the same story. You have you know companies and individuals and so on. But not only this. Uh, the first years of Practically every nonprofit I know, I are based on on voluntary on voluntary service. Uh, every person who gave to the nonprofit an important amount of money considers herself or himself as a stakeholder. This. You know, in a company you have one founder, two founders, if you have four, it's many, but there are four of them, but there are not hundreds of them. And uh, in a typical non-profit, you have a hundred people who have their stake in the organization. And if you are honest, you respect them. So this is another part of, of this complexity which, which make it rather complicated. But also, I mean, you know, there is always a, a second part. A, the second part of it that you are surrounded by very interesting people, uh, on average more interesting and more enthusiastic than in business. So there are many people who tell you what to do in your job. <laughs> so let's get, uh, let's get to some other questions. So the first one we, that we went through. Uh, but the second one we we have there. Uh, so there is probably a, a young uh, young person. Um, so what strategies for success do you recommend to a generalist person? So the one that does not want to be uh, a professional, I, I guess specialist in, in some field. So what what should they do with their life? I don't know. Uh, and the, the second part of, of the answer maybe will be uh, try to find what makes you enthusiastic, happy, and what you are good at. Uh, and this you can find, you, you will not find this in books. You will not find this drinking beer with your friends. You will find it by, by doing things. And this is something I, I just always repeat to our students work and work and work and work and you will just find the the what what makes you you know enthusiastic and you will find it and and not only you will find it but you'll find the right people because you, you you work with people so you will will find not only what you are good at but you will find uh, other people who can help you then start and develop your idea. So just be active. I, I, I'm not a big uh, enthusiast about reading books, to be honest. Um, and when is the right time to plant seeds? Uh, 
give up on entrepreneurship to get a steady income instead. So somebody who considers stability. Uh, there certainly isn't a proper answer to this. Uh, every every single single case is different. Uh, maybe I can tell you my experience. Uh, I sh honestly I should have quit earlier. Uh, for many years, I uh, now when I look back, I wasn't. Uh, Satisfied with, with the business, I didn't know it. You know, this is the this is the problem with business that it runs, it brings you money, it brings you even some kind of success and recognition, and uh, under these circumstances, you sometimes don't realize that it's not the the right thing to do, and that you, that you are bored. Uh, that was uh, the story of m me being uh, for four years uh, president of the Slovak Association of Travel Agencies. Uh, I, I was bored in the company and uh, instead of quitting and going to do something else, I, I was just, uh, you know, I continued and continued, and to, to, to be less bored, uh, I, I worked at, at, at the association, which was great, in, in many ways, great experience, and I, I, I got to know many interesting people and so on, but honestly, it wasn't my, my life, uh, you know, purpose. It was just you know, some kind of... Uh, uh, it's not so, uh, was, but just, was it a question of money, or was, was it a question of some, something No, else? it was just, uh, when, when I look back, and maybe when, when I, I if, if a friend from business came to me and, and, and asked about this, I would tell him or her, uh, forget about, you know, all these circumstances, okay, your business is doing well, you have enough money, you have recognition. Are you really satisfied with what you are doing? Are, are you doing the most important thing of your life? Is, is this, if, if you do this until you're, I don't know, 70, when you are 70 and you, you do this, will you say this was a very good life? This is the, the right question, and if I ask myself these questions not five years ago, but ten years ago, an honest answer would be no, and, and the, the next step should be, okay, so what next? And I would have saved five years of my life. So let's get to, to start up, so let's get to other countries and Silicon Valley, how hard is to start a business and raise money in Slovakia? So. I don't know. <laughs> No, 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 no idea. I cannot compare. I never worked in Silicon Valley. Uh, maybe a different answer. Uh, every time it's hard, and 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 at the same time you have to do it. it it's just uh, it's not harder or less hard than you know. In the nineties, uh, we were solving unbelievable problems that today don't exist. But on the other hand, there was no competition because everything was a big mess, you know. So basically, uh, every time it's hard, and every time it's worth it. Just do it. And did, did you raise? Did you raise any money at the start? Did you have any capital? No, no, it didn't exist. <laughs> nothing, nothing existed like that, and uh, and then later we didn't want it and. Oh, we didn't need it. I don't know, but the, 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 this startup ecosystem, uh, which is now uh, absolutely normal, it, it's mainly a matter of the last ten years. Um, but be, uh, be careful with this. I mean, uh, the, 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 again, there isn't the one good answer. 
as I said with the founders, for, for someone it's great to be alone and you know just have everything under control. For someone it's great to have three co-founders. Uh, the same is with investors. For someone uh, it's great to, to go gradually, step by step, invest the profits and so on. For someone uh, the right way is to, it depends on, on you, on what you what you are uh, as a person, uh, what is your goal, you know, there are no right answers in this area. And how to stay motivated in a startup environment? Uh, or maybe what I, about you? I don't think it's a matter of motivation in the startup environment, it's a matter of motivation in life in general. And that, that's what I was talking about. Ten years ago, I wasn't motivated anymore to do business and today I am in a complicated environment of a, of a non-profit. I work three times more than I did in business and I'm motivated because it makes sense. I love this work. This work is absolutely something that, that makes sense for me, that I want to do. It's if you don't have this this feeling that that my God, someone is paying me money for this, this is motivation. If you don't have this, then you probably don't do the, the right job. And um, when you when you work with startups, you feel unmotivated, or unsure about what to do next. Uh, where do you look for advice? Uh, I am a relationship person, so. Again, we are, someone can be totally different, there are no right answers, I will tell you my story. Uh, for me, uh, I wouldn't be able to, for, for, for example, I wouldn't be able to, to be in Exteria without the total support of my family. Uh, it's, it's so difficult that, that Without the support, uh, I would last maybe one year and then I would have to find a normal job. But my wife knows me. For, for her, it was no surprise that I, I, I chose Nextedia. For, for my wife, to go, oh my god, uh, it took you 20 years to, to understand that your, your, your uh, job is this. So, so uh, she knows me. And, and uh, someone we uh, next day organizes a uh, career events, Night of Chances, and, and uh, which is another story, uh, big, big, uh, successful project. And one of the speakers uh, last year said a beautiful, beautiful phrase that uh, whom you choose as your life partner is one of the most important career decisions of your life. And that's true. It's my case. I, I couldn't do what I'm doing without the total support of my wife. And it's a, it's a, it's a story of many, many. And again, it's not a matter of, it could be business. I mean, it's, and it's a story of many businessmen or, or non-profit people. It's just, if you want to do something really well and, and go deep without the support of, of your family, it's very difficult. And um, looking into the future, uh, do you have now any, any goals you'd like to achieve in, uh, in the next area? Yes. Uh, I think next area is a wonderful project. Uh, I would like to see I would like to see 500 of our alumni because I think that that uh, in a small country like Slovakia with five million people uh, 500 and the motivated skilled people with values and with, with an active approach to the environment will change this country. So, so this is this is the goal from the very beginning. I did my job for 
this five years, maybe some more. And if, if we succeed to do this, I think that we need a big, big, big step to, to, to help this country to be a modern country where, where our kids will want to, to, to live. Uh, when, when I talk to most of our donors are my, my age, and in fact, what they what they say most is, we want our children to live here and not in the United States, not in the United Kingdom. We want to have our grandchildren in Slovakia. And to do this, you cannot order this. The only way to do it is just to to make this country a good place to live. And how do you uh, imagine a good country to live? That's a philosophical question. I, in, in, in many ways, very simple. I mean, no, nobody from us uh, wants uh, corruption, you know, business, uh, with politics, uh, uh, mafia, and you know, justice just for, for some people. Pretty obvious things. I, I'm not idealistic in terms of, you know, I'm not looking for some utopia. I'm, I want a normal country where everyone has the freedom to do pursuit his so own happiness. That, that's it. So we have a few more questions. Um, if there are any, you can still use uh, Slido. Um, we talked about, we talked a lot about um, about uh, the sustainability of NGO um, and and sustainability of, of a business. Uh, so I guess we have discovered. Or uh, who asked this question? Could you specify um, what what more we could say? Yes, uh, I did. Um, I just I, I was just because that's one of the biggest because someone else is starting a business difficult, but I, I think when we look at the, the, the true difficulty is sustaining a business because so many new businesses fail. So, and with an NGO, you said that you don't have the money, state money as well, so I just wondered how you're sustaining that business. Talk some more about that. So if there is any difference in sustaining uh, NGO and, and yeah, if there's any difference, and, and how you sustaining the uh, In many ways, it is uh, similar. Uh, you must do a very good job. It's exactly the same as business. You, the, the client want a very good service. And it's the same in business, exactly the same in the non-profit. That's why I'm saying that a good non-profit there aren't many of them, but I know at least, let's say, 10 to 20, which are absolutely comparable to the best businesses I know. And they are offering very good services. So that's the, the, the first prerequisite. Uh, second is uh, you must find uh, the funding uh, and I'm not saying state funding is bad. I, I don't want state funding, but I know several non-profits with state funding which are okay. I mean, it always depends on circumstances. And in some, in some areas it's even necessary. Uh, so I'm not judging anyone. Uh, so you must find your, your, your clients on both sides, the, the, those who receive the service and those who pay it. And, and for, for us, the, the way how to do it was, uh, it was a long story. The first years, as I said, was just voluntary service for three or four years. Then the first funding came, but it, it wasn't just a coincidence, the first people who gave funding had to see the first three years of, of the service. Without it, they wouldn't just believe it that it will happen. So the first people giving money said to themselves, okay, so this is a good idea. Not only idea, for three years they had been doing 
to Job. It does make sense. We see that uh, they believe uh, really strongly this idea. We'll give them some money. And then, after another year, uh, the first company came and, and thought, oh, there's this, this, this uh, non-profit working with talented students. Uh, we would like to, to work with talented students because there is this whole new generation we don't understand. We, we want to, to work with them because they will be our clients, they will be our, our, our colleagues. And then the second one, and the third one, and it took time, and it was hard, hard, hard work, and it took five years, six years, seven years, and now until ten years, it's not the end. I mean, I, I have many, many plans, and they are all based on how successful we will be with funding. Uh, and you have always choices. There are non-profits who have one founder who gives money and and. They live with the, on the one hand, the insecurity if this person quits, it's the end. But on the other hand, it's comfortable. So it's like life and everything. You have you have all the choices. You know, it's, there is no difference. You have all the choices as in business in life. Yeah, I was just thinking more from the point of competition, not as much funding. I don't think that competition, that I don't think that there is a real difference in competition anywhere. I mean, competition is hard everywhere, every second. Uh, there are other people who have the same idea as you. Uh, the answer is just work hard, find the best people you can to do it with you, and and you will have luck or you will have no luck. But, you know, just, okay, it's life. But that's why I'm saying that, that, that it's a paradox when I say that I don't like books because I'm a literature person. It's, it's absurd. But, but in, I said in terms of you won't learn this in books. I mean, you won't learn in books what you are good at. You won't learn in books uh, who are your future partners. You just must, you must work and work and work and work and we'll find it. Uh, I, I, I'm hoping if you can find any connections between the way you choose to found organization and your personality, maybe your inner, uh, um, maybe values that uh, you choose, uh, maybe you consider yourself to put uh, in some kind of risk to have uh, government money or can you consider this? Can you can you have this insight? There is uh, some uh, mirroring reflection on your personality, the way you choose to. Of course, it's uh, you know, um, as I said, uh, most of my friends are business people, and their companies are their mirrors in everything, in funding, in how they work with people, and and. And they are mirrors of their families. I mean, I'm not different at home than at, at work. It's, and and I, I, I like playing uh, football, and, and it's the same thing. Your character is absolutely mirrored by how you play. Are you a team player, or are you giving up, or everything is, is there. So, and it's a such, such complex project as a company, non-profit, whatever. Yes, you are there, and I will. My, my, my experience of the. Yeah, I wanted to say this because it's interesting. Uh, I have the same uh, strong points and the same weak points as in business. You know, it's still me. I'm com I, I'm fighting with the same problems in the nonprofit than in, in the business. It's me. So of course. How are you dealing with uh, compromising, uh, to make compromises between uh, you, your preferences, and maybe the stakeholders you mentioned? Uh, are, you, are you compromising, or how you are dealing with this? Every day you are compromising everywhere. You are compromising in family, you are compromising in business, you know, it's just a matter of, 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 of scale and, and, and 
how how far you you, you will go, but uh, compromise is a normal state of life. It's it's everything. As, as, as I said, this is the, the, that's why I'm using the the word generosity. Of course, there are there are compromises I wouldn't do, but then there are many compromises I want to do because that's why then I have good partners and good colleagues and you know we are all different every day is a compromise but in, in a good sense and, and everyone has uh, some some uh, some limits and behind that limit it, it doesn't make sense anymore but yes of course I don't know if it's still in topic but maybe you remember some compromise you, you made uh, you, you didn't know, know if it's a good compromise, but then it proved like it was a good choice? Uh, let's say this is also some, an, an experience I have. Uh, when you hire people, when you hire people, uh, you usually uh, look for references because I, I am not a, a psychologist and I really cannot you know, judge anyone based on an interview. Nobody, nobody can, but I'm sure not the one. Uh, so usually you, you look for, for references. And I have an interesting experience. Uh, it happened to me several times that uh, this reference was, uh, yes, I know these people, I worked with him or her, uh, this was good, this was good, and this wasn't very good, some, some defect. And uh, several times I, I said to one myself, because was, there was pressure and whatever, the circumstances complicated. So I picked just these positive, positive uh, things and I thought, well, maybe he overestimates these negative ones. I will know how to do with it. Never it was the case. Every single time this person came and there were these positive sides from the reference, there were these negative sides, and I usually didn't know how to deal with these negative sides. Mm -hmm. So, so it just, this is my personal experience. I, I believe, of course, I did not believe everyone, but if this reference person is someone I trust, uh, then I'm really careful. Or at least I know that uh, it's bad to, to underestimate, you know, the, the negative reference. It just it will certainly happen with your company, and you just have to 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 know. Okay, maybe I will know how to deal with this. Maybe not. Thank you. So uh, last question, and you can choose it from this Which one would you like to? several of them. Uh, the hardest part, we were talking about it, uh, funding, and and there is, no, no, there is one thing which, and this is harder in non-profit also than in business. Uh, okay, I will answer the first okay. one because it's a long <laughs> answer, and it, it, I think it is interesting. Um, the hardest thing in non-profit is to say no, opportunities and the reason is that in business you say no to money and money is nice money is good but it isn't so hard to say no to more money but in the non-profit you say no to some good service to some improvement and this is very difficult and especially when you really love your work and are surrounded by enthusiastic people who love their work. And, uh, and then what happens is that, that you have too much work and people are, are exhausted and frustrated. And this is a very typical story for 
good quality non-profits that their their people are are exhausted and that's the reason because it's very difficult to say no to, to good opportunities maybe that's the last sentence thank you so much thank you very much for uh...